Hey everyone, long time no see. A while back, I saw Adam Savage's video on these mini chop saws, and I finally got around to getting myself one the other week, and it has been a game changer for working with brass stock that I like to use for various projects. The saw itself was surprisingly sturdily built for the price. The base and the vise are both cast aluminium, and the plastic pieces don't actually feel that cheap, even if the fit of some pieces isn't particularly appealing. The saw has a safety to keep you from pushing it down and cutting by accident. When you press this button, this arm moves and allows the saw to drop. I really don't like this system. I would like for the button to also turn the motor on, since the on and off switch isn't particularly easy to find in an emergency. I may mod mine in the future to work like this. The biggest issue I have with this saw is the accuracy of the vice angle control. It's not really accurate at all and it's not fun to use. This is another thing I'm looking at upgrading in the future. The vice jaw itself also lifts up if you clamp certain things. Unfortunately, upgrading the vice would be difficult without replacing it entirely. I was hopeful when I saw this hole that it was held together with a grub screw, but the jaw is actually riveted in place and can't be easily modified. But now onto the main event. Months ago, I upgraded my cheap calipers to this nice origin cow pair, and I've been wondering what to do with the old ones for some time. I've seen people use them to make DROs for lathes and mills, and I thought this saw could benefit from a similar system. For those that don't know, DRO just means digital readout, and they are used on things like lathes and mills to display various measurements. A DRO would be especially useful on this tool if you need a lot of the same size piece, and I'll show some accuracy tests later on. To begin with though, what are the constraints and goals I set myself for this project? Firstly, I do not want to drill or cut either the saw or the calipers. I believe this to be not necessary, and some people may not want to destroy a working pair of calipers. This also opens up the design to be used with nicer, more accurate calipers if you so desire, although currently I only have it modelled for this common, cheap eBay model. Secondly, accuracy. Given the inaccuracy of the cheap calipers, I wasn't expecting it to be perfectly accurate, but within a tenth of a millimetre would have been good especially for rough cut stock that is going to be cleaned up more accurately later on. Finally, I also wanted to maintain full function of the saw, specifically the ability to cut angles from 0 to 45 degrees. Some designs I discarded even though they would have been more robust, due to them resulting in the vice table not being able to turn. Now on to printing it. On screen now are the basic print settings for all the pieces. I use Cura Slicer and an Ender 3. I print with a brim instead of a raft, 0.16mm layer height, and 20% cubic infill. Laid out here is how I would recommend orientating the parts. It results in some gross supports on the vice clamp, but it's needed to be this way for strength. Most of the cleanup is pretty simple, but removing the supports from this clamp area can be difficult and result in a broken part if you're not very careful. With the parts prepared, it's time to install the upgrade. To begin with, unscrew this knob on the vise. Slide this piece around the vise, and it should line up neatly with the hole in question. Retighten the knob. These two holes are optional for M2 bolts to provide extra clamping force. They do help, but are not required. Next, I'm going to install the guide arm onto the calipers. The arm simply clips in place like so. There is space for a single M3 bolt, but this stops the arm from moving entirely and would only be used to lock it in place for repeated cuts. Next, put a support block on each of these prongs to keep the calipers from lifting up. These each use one M3 16mm bolt. Finally, slide this assembly into the clamp and tighten down the two M3 by 8mm bolts. Any longer bolts and you won't be able to rotate the assembly to get 45 degree cuts. With this done, the upgrade is installed. To use it, close the slaw down and slide the calipers so that they are pushing against the saw. Use the zero function to zero them at this position. Move the calipers to the desired position. In this example, 10 millimeters. Lock the bolt on the calipers and then use the M3 bolt on the arm. You're now ready to make cuts.
Here I am making some more fancy pegs for my spell tracker. It only takes me about 11 minutes to cut all 30. While they are very close, there is a small bit of deviation between them. This is fine since I need to clean them up regardless, but it is somewhat irritating nonetheless. The cause of this deviation could be the arm flexing or the sore body flexing. Shown here, the sword does have some flex when in use, which would cause inconsistencies. Essentially, don't expect perfect results from a cheap tool, so cut over to compensate for that. Anyways, thanks for watching. Parts are in the description, along with social media links, music, and any other sources for the video. If you enjoy the content, maybe consider subscribing. It really helps me out, and will let you know when I release more projects in the future. See you next time.